Looking at these plants, would you think they're related to each other? Do you see any common characters amongst their flowers that unite them? And now look at these exact same plants and seed. What do you think now? Are they related or not? In my previous videos on plant families, we focused a lot on flora parts, which are usually pretty reliable for identification of a plant family. But in Fabaceae, commonly known as legumes or the pea family, the flowers are not the easiest character for recognizing this family. I mean, just look at these unusual flowers of the carob tree and compare them to these bohemia flowers. It's difficult to see any repeating pattern in these flowers. And for that reason, we might need to shift focus towards other characters, such as fruit or leaf types, to help us complete an overall picture to start seeing the patterns and successfully identify this family. With around 20,000 species, Fabaceae is the third largest plant family, right after Orchidaceae and Asteraceae. And there is a lot of variation and appearance across its members. Their growth form goes from trees and shrubs, through to climbing herbs with tendrils, to small annuals. Some plants from this family that you're already likely familiar with would be trifolium, clover, commonly found in lawns, or garden peas, grown worldwide for their sweet-tasting seeds. Just think about opening up a pea pod and seeing the row of seeds. The pod, called a legume, is a type of dry fruit that splits open along one or two seams or sutures, revealing the seeds inside, which are all in one chamber, and there might be one or many. Pods are often dehiscent, which means they naturally open when mature, but some can be indehiscent, such as those of carob, and they don't naturally split open when they mature. The fruit, legume, is the single most obvious character of the family Fabaceae, and gives the family its common name, legumes. However, as always, there are exceptions and deviations from the typical pea pod look, such as in this medicago, whose legume is coiled like a snail, or the pod of this indigo bush, which is inflated and covered with blistery glands. But overall, even though we're not seeing clear similarities in flowers, we can readily see the repeating pattern in fruits. Also, look at this giant senna pot. I'm blown away by its size every time I see it. When we look inside, we can see a row of individual seeds, in this case, they're still unripe. In other legumes, such as this erythrina, the pot can be constricted between individual seeds. Seeing all these examples of legume pots, I think you get an idea for what it looks like. But to show you an exception, look at this tipu fruit. It might somewhat remind you of a maple seed. There is one seed and a flat wing. This is a fruit type called Samara. This might confuse you a little, and that's why it's important to look at all plant characters together, not only on one isolated character, in order to confidently identify them to family. On top of that, plants are not in fruit all year long. So what are the other characters to look out for when identifying the Fabaceae? When we really focus on the flowers, we will start finding patterns there as well, even though they might be more subtle than the fruit characters. They are most commonly bisexual, having both male and female organs present. At their base, the flowers usually have five sepals that are generally fused, and five petals. We see these features very clearly in this bohemia flower. Five fused, slightly separating sepals and five petals. But then, when we look at this calyandra, for example, it looks quite different. That's because this whole head is an inflorescence, composed of many individual flowers. Having flowers in clusters, or inflorescences, is very common in Fabaceae. Again, you can think of a clover with flower heads composed of many individual flowers. If we actually isolate an individual flower out of this Caliandra inflorescence, we do in fact find five fused sepals and five petals. And all of these parts, creating that spiky look, are stamens, with one style hiding in the middle. 
the family Fabaceae is taxonomically divided into six subfamilies, and as you might guess, there are characters that are shared amongst the members of each subfamily, but do not occur in all Fabaceae. The most notable character are the so-called papillinaceous flowers in the subfamily Faboidae, although not all Faboidae members have this. Papillinaceous flowers are butterfly-like in shape, papillo means butterfly in Latin, with highly differentiated petals. You might come across the term pea flower as well, as this flower type is typical for garden peas. The uppermost petal is called a banner or a standard petal. Then there is one petal on each side, these petals are usually parallel to each other and we call them wings. Underneath is a keel, which consists of two keel petals, often fused together, but sometimes free. Look at these flowers of Crotolaria. We have the large banner, round wings, and a keel, which consists of two fused parts. When we dissect the flower, the parts are even more obvious. Another example is this erythrina. The banner is very obvious, and the keel as well. However, the wings are very small and hidden inside, so the flower needs to be dissected for us to see all the parts. I recommend you to try dissecting one or two Fabioidae flowers to really understand the morphology and see all the parts for yourself. The most readily accessible one, although it's pretty tiny and might be hard to see, might be the flower of a clover. If you try it, let me know how it went. The leaves are usually compound. If you need a refresher on how to recognize simple or compound leaves, check out my video on this topic in the description below. They can be trifoliate, like in Trifolium, Erythrina, or the previously mentioned Crotolaria. Most commonly, they're pinnate or bipinnate, and some might even be palmately compound. And for an exception to the rule, we can see the bilobate leaves of Bohemia. With this bohemia, we can also clearly see the leaves are arranged alternately, which is typical for Fabaceae. Fabaceae is an economically important plant family. The plants are used as forage for animals, for example alfalfa, or are processed for human consumption. Here you can think of any beans, chickpeas, lentils, tamarind, or even peanuts. It probably doesn't surprise you that peanuts are legumes, now you know what a typical legume seed pod looks like. So what do you think? Do you feel like you could categorize plants into this family, or does it seem like this family is too diverse? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please like and share this video with others. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.